In this video, I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into z-scores. Earlier videos introduced you to the concept of a z-score and how three uh, variables need to be identified in order to calculate your z-score. Uh, you need to understand central tendency, the mean. You need to understand variation, sigma. And you have to have a specification limit uh, that's a spec limit satisfying customer needs. Using uh, the z-score formula, you can then calculate uh, a z-score value, which is a representation of performance in the system. Um, we sometimes call them sigma levels of performance. Z-scores are great uh, when your mean, standard deviation, and spec don't land exactly on the plus or minus one, two, three standard deviation lines. If they did, we could use empirical rule. All of this information is covered in earlier videos, so if any of the information I just highlighted in red is new or fuzzy, I encourage you to go back and take a look at some of those earlier videos. For this video, the learning objectives are going to be, once we've calculated what a z-score is, how do, we, how do we convert this z-score value into a percentage that the rest of the world can understand? When I say sigma level of performance is equal to 1.6, or I have a sigma level of performance of 2.8, or um, I'm operating at 5.23 sigma level, um, how can we convert that into a percentage in or percentage out um, so the rest of the world can understand it? And uh, we'll use in this video um, z-score tables to help us better understand uh, that conversion. In a separate video, we'll take a look at using uh, the formulas built into Microsoft Excel. All right, I've taken the information and uh, just uh, transposed it over to this newer screen, and let's draw out uh, what this means to us. Um, so we've gone out and we've collected process performance data. The average uh, for the data set that we went out and collected, and this could be any type of process performance data, um, uh, time-based data, um, physical measurement data, and we found that uh, with the current state data, the average was 100, uh, the amount of variation measured in standard deviation was 10, and uh, we've also determined that our customer needs are set at 116 or less. So I'm going to draw that out. Okay, so I've drawn it out, and now what I want to do is calculate the percent that's below 116. Uh, the first step that I'll take is I'll calculate its z-score value. Okay, so now I've got the sigma level of performance represented as the z-score. Uh, but how do I convert that into a percentage that uh, can be well understood by uh, the rest of the world? That's where z-score tables come into play. And so let's um, take a look at a z-score table and how to use it, and then we'll take our z-score value of 1.6 and uh, convert it into a percentage. All right, so I've... Uh, cleaned up the screen a little bit. I've got my z-score of 1.6 calculated, uh, visual uh, performance data drawn right here. How do we convert uh, z-score of 1.6 into a percent customer satisfied? Well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll first find a z-score table. Now, in your workbook, I've got a number of z-score tables already inserted. You can do a simple internet search. Every business stats textbook will have a z-score table. Um, but when you do look for z-score tables, the first thing that you want to identify is, is the information for a one-sided z-score value or a two-sided z-score value. In the same way that you can have specification limits that have just an upper spec limit, like in this example, we had uh, an upper specification limit only. There was no penalty for anything too low. But in some um, in in some process improvement projects, uh, you may have a two-sided uh, specification limit. Depending upon the type of process that you have, if it's one-sided, uh, you're going to need a one-sided z-score table. If it's two-sided, we'll need to take a look at a two-sided z-score table, and we'll do that next. We have one-sided data, so let me get rid of this example info. We'll then uh, take a look at the um, z-score value of 1.6, positive 1.6, and we'll look up that information 
below. Uh, and I'm going to scroll down. Here we go. Here's our value. Z-scores are sometimes called standard scores. And we'll look down, 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 down. Here's 1.6. And that equates to a percentage of 94.52. Know that it is possible using the z-score formula to have negative values. Let me give you an example of this. All right. In this second example, um, let's now say that the specification limit isn't at 116. Let's say the spec limit is at 84. I'm drawing it out, and you can see a much lower percentage of uh, people satisfied would should be what our actual percentage is. Um, if we do the z-score calculation, spec limit at 84 minus 100 over 10, we're going to end up with a negative z-score value. You can have z-scores that are positive or negative. Um, and so the table should also reflect that, and it does. Uh, let's now take a look and find negative 1.6. There it is. And that would equate to about 5.4. Eh, let's call it 5.5%. First, make sure that your z-score table reflects the type of process performance that you're dealing with, one-sided or two-sided. Then uh, just do a quick lookup. Let's take a look at a more uh, complicated table next. All right, in this next example, I've got process performance data. Uh, this time, the spec limit is a little bit more precise. I've calculated out the z-score. It's now 1.63, not 1.6 in the earlier example. Um, I made sure that my z-score table reflects the fact that I'm dealing with, in this case, a one-sided spec. Uh, it's a one-sided z-score table. And um, here's a more detailed table. You'll notice that you've got uh, tenths down uh, as column values, and then you've got hundredths across as row values. So if I wanted 1.63, I would go down the z-score table to 1.6, and then go over to the hundredths values, 0, 1, 2, here it is. There's my value, 94.83. Just a more detailed one-sided z-score table. Let's take a look at a two-sided uh, z-score table lookup next. All right, in this next example, uh, what I've got is I've got process performance data and I've got a two-sided spec. It's got an upper and a lower specification limit. After calculating mean standard deviation and our point of inspection, our spec limits, we determine that the Z score value is 1.60. And one way to take a look at this, if uh, the data is precisely centered in the middle of your upper and lower specification limit, you could say that this is 0.8 here, 0.8 here, uh, due to the rules of symmetry. That's not always the case. Sometimes you might have um, you might have your process performance curve shifted off to one side or the other, and you could have a situation where this isn't 0.8 or, or that these aren't equal. This could be something like 0.2 and um, um, 1.4 if you were shifted one way or the other. But in this example, the data is uh, centered uh, in the middle uh, of both the upper and lower specification limits. So we've got 0.8 on one side, 0.8 on the other, for a z-score value of 1.6. Then uh, what we would do is we take a look at a two-sided z-score table. An example of one is right here. Now sometimes uh, your two-sided z-score tables will actually have uh, both upper and lower spec symmetric so that it would look something like this where uh, whatever you looked up, it would be covering this the whole region uh, all in red. Um, but frequently for two-sided z-scores, knowing that you don't always have the data centered between upper and lower points of inspection, your table will look like the one that we've actually got. So let me clean it up. Where the z-score value is calculated from the mean to that point of inspection, as we see here. So we'll take a look and calculate 0.8 on one side, 0.8 on the other side, and get our z-score of 1.6. I'm going to look down for 0.8. Here it is. 
0 0.80 is point, point 0.8 is equal to uh, we end up with just over 57% for the percentage from the C-score value. So now you've seen how to how to convert Z-scores to percentages using uh, Z-score tables, uh, making sure that you choose the appropriate table, whether it's one-sided or two-sided, depending upon your specification limits. Um, in the next video, we'll take a look at calculating Z-scores using Excel. Um, easier in some ways, but a little bit more abstract. I always like to start with tables first with individuals because it's more visual, easier to visually understand first. Um, but in reality, most of the time when we're working with process data, we're not using a table. We'll use Excel and just uh, plug the numbers in. And most statistical packages, when you visually plot out the data as a histogram, um, you'll also get your z-score values and your conversion to percent in, percent out automatically calculated for you too. How to use uh, z-scores in Excel, coming up next.